Hello, everybody. Welcome back to James and Flav for now. Um, I am with Talk Sports' very own Flav McFlaverson, who joins me fresh off being on the phone to Danny Murphy, no less, and Mr. Goldstein. Uh, they wanted some Spurs opinion. Who did they go to? Ben Bowman. But Ben Bowman wasn't available. So then they asked Flav, and there Flav was just waiting, uh, cap in hand. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to burst your bubble. But I was on Talk Sport too, and it wasn't. To Danny Murphy, it was to. Oh, I was on the wrong one. Yeah, I've been Click watching the wrong and, one this whole time. And Dan, Dan Bardell. Although, okay. much better. Probably but rather talk to them too, to be honest. My, uh, sure, out of the Dans, I probably prefer Dan Bardell, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right, we are going to talk about all sorts as ever. I do think we're in a real sort of um, zenith of the podcast right now with top fives. We've got Stephen Tries, who's going to be chirping in again as he does most weeks. Um, we've got lots of chat. Oh, there's a sentence that I had to write down within the podcast that was utterly heartbreaking. I'll tell you that in a second. The main plot this week is will Mikel Arteta mastermind a win over Pep Guardiola, Flav? And will he do the double on Spurs and Man City, who are essentially the two main rivals with two players missing? We will be heading, believe it or not, to the tactics board because I can trust that Flav has watched the last game that Arsenal have played. Now, we are recording this uh, before Arsenal play uh, Atalanta this evening. So there could be more injuries at play. Um, but we'll, we'll have a look at that because I'm intrigued about that game because uh, there's not too much change and there's loads of injuries. The subplot will be modern day Barclaysmen. I've been talking about Barclaysmen a lot this week, but we've got a whole current day Barclays 11 from Shane Lynch. who is um, Current day? Huh? Current day, yeah, current... exactly. So we can decide if we even... decide if we agree with it or not. Um, Doesn't he... make any sense. Uh, well, just I mean, stick it's with it. It's not Barclays. It's a different era. What, what are we in now? It's just it's just Premier League, isn't what it? What are we in? Who who sponsors who actually... it? <laughs> Who is the sponsor of the program? I don't know. Um, but uh, if that doesn't get you excited, Shane started his comment with two-week new bit. So our audience, they know us. They know us well. Um, as I said, that sentence I had to write down earlier um, was pretty heartbreaking. And it was three words, four words, sort of. Clothes off pooers. We'll be discussing that. Top fives we've got in here. Unnecessary personal rules. Pizza anger. And uh, Jim's big laugh award. And Colton Palmer. Do you know what I saw? I looked at what you sent me. It doesn't really make. And I'm, I'm, I'm sort of pooing on all of your ideas here. <laughs> I, I, I'll this read is it straight, out. But this you... is your idea. This is your bloody idea. Well, well, it, it, could it, it be the end of it? Then? We're overthinking it. We're you're overthinking saying... This is the problem. We're right. overthinking it. You're saying this is the end of Colton I yeah. mean, you can go rogue if you want. You've, you've always backed yourself to be able to go rogue with the Colton Palmer. I can do it. I can do it. I do you know do, what? do you ever hear things? Or have moments? We used to have this with um, someone we used to work with. He didn't know certain footballers, and it was just like, it was like a. It's like a knife in the heart where you're like, oh, is Someone, it either like not... you're stupid or I'm old? Something like that. Um, yeah, that this is, we're talking about the Socks big dog. Um, yeah, we're talking about the big dog, of course. OGs yeah, and it'd be great we go, it. do you remember Mark Hughes? And he'd look at you like, I don't know, know what that is. Yeah. I was like, oh. who is it? There was what, something worse. It was like Maldini or Edgar Davids or something like that. But do you know what? Someone said in the comments and it was, it, it hit me. Hit me hard. He said, I, I, I'll be honest, I thought Colton Palmer was was Cole Palmer's name, just like his first name longer, and that Cole had been oh, shortened. So that, that, um, this is it. We're getting so old. That was tough. So that old. was tough. That was um, a tough one. Uh, do you want to get it straight is, in? Sorry, go on. It is the Barclays. Still the Barclays. So, Well, the, the official Barclays. bank is Barclays. Right. Well, there we go. Do you know the official beer of the Premier League is? Budweiser, I would imagine. No, it's not. Oh, there's been a actually. change up. Awkward. It's everyone's favourite Guinness, which is nothing to do with England at all. It should like that is my that's my drink of choice. I, I have um, I've I went to a sort of a, a shop today, and it's like got curated really cool stuff, right? And up the up top, it's now become vintage. Now I don't know how people feel about vintage clothes, but I went up the stairs and I thought, go on, I'll have a look. You always have a look, but you don't think you're ever going to buy anything. I look at the I look at the rack, glistening in the middle. There's a QPR Guinness. Red and black, like jacket, and jacket. I, yeah, and I was like, oh no, because <laughs> when it's QPR, like, you must see Tottenham merch all over the place. You must be sick of it. 
But with QPR, mm. you don't really get to see that kind of stuff. And I, the other thing I think with like football shirts and stuff <laughs> is you kind of want something that pe- you either want it to be legit or you want it to be something that people don't really have. Now, I tried it on and I, I thought it looked all right. Yeah. But I thought, Jim, you just spent too much on a jumper. Walk away. Um, I went down the stairs, went to pay for said jumper. It was a cardigan, actually. And uh, and I said, oh, by the way, that QPR jacket, where's that come from? Stupid question. Stupid question. Yeah, you can't boot sell. He said, he went, no. Well, no, because it's, it's quite a like, cool place. He went, yeah, wow. yeah. He went, well, yeah, actually, it's like a... It's, he basically explained it and he went, yeah, there's only about two of them. It was a one, it was a one off day where they only had, and they only had about two, they only had about 200 and we could only get two off them. And I went, oh shit. So I bought it. Let, where is it then? Let me cool, see it. Cool, now? Cool, cool, cool. It's downstairs. It's downstairs. Why is it downstairs? Like, it's too why hot, you, isn't it? It's you... too hot for, it's too hot for a jacket right now. Well, so it's, you bought a QPR Guinness jacket. I it's can't nice, even though. visualize what I that know, means. I can understand why you weren't sure about it, but I fit, I'm okay with it. Good. I'll wear it next week. Reason to be here next week. Um, yeah, do you want Jim's Big Laugh Award or would you like to get straight into the hot, juicy game that is Arsenal Man City? I mean, I'd happily never talk about Arsenal again, but because uh, I have done that a lot this week. Um, but, but we're um, mo- moving I'll go on, for... aren't we? We're moving forwards with Arsenal. Yeah. And uh, the, give me the big big laugh awards. Give me them okay, first. Right. Just let's, let's up it a bit. Do you know what, before I do that, what I will say is uh, we have a Patreon. We would love you to be a part of that Patreon. Our patrons are watching right now. And one of them, um, Jack Hancock, will be providing us with Hancock's hot take. Um, he, he watches lots of films. Let's see what number he's up to. We'll be talking about that later on. But if you do want to become a part of the Patreon, we do a uncensored mailbag every week. Talking about all sorts. Yeah, it's good. Um, so join us for that. Less than a less than a London Guinness. Yep, I would say. Also, last one I would say is on yeah, the JLA FC Twitter account. We are doing Twitter Spaces that are phenomenal. This week, I'm so excited. We've got Clive Palmer, the Clive Palmer, for our space. Last Mother week we Palmer. had the Harry Brooks, amongst others. So we've got amazing, amazing guests on the Twitter spaces. And if you miss the Twitter space, which you shouldn't do, but if you do, the podcast will be going on the Jaffin feed. Okay. So another reason to check out our Jaffin podcast feed. And also, if you want to get involved in that, make sure you let people know, because that is what the Twitter spaces are for. Right. Jim's Big Laugh Award. Freddie 46113 said, I've never been more entertained as when you two talk about pasta. I didn't realise we spoke about pasta for about half hour last week. Did we? Yeah, I did go on. Um, it was incredible, <laughs> actually. I don't know how, like, me having, me on a Wednesday night having a lasagna was 20 minutes. And it was all right. It was, a, it was an okay listen, I'll be honest. Well, yeah. We're, you know, we're serving something there that others aren't. Um, so yeah, that probably that... reason for that, though, isn't there? Sadly, Just because yeah. you can do something, should you do something? <laughs> yeah, numbers were low last week, um, I will be honest. In, and of course. In, in the lead-up to a North London derby. Hmm. Uh, Canonogic said 15 minutes in, and Flav's mentioned two other podcasts and a book. Is there anything you want to... Anyone want to promo this week? Yeah. Uh, can you listen to Football Between the Lines, please, and The Fighting Cock, and The Lab. There you go. Just three this Cheers. Week. Uh, yeah. Clayt said, what's everyone up to this week? <laughs> this made me laugh. What's everyone up to this weekend? I'll be at home relaxing, probably head buried into a good book. Perhaps Ange Ball, the def- <laughs> definitive biography of Ange Postacoglu-, Postacoglu by Vince Rigari, 2024. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. Um, available in all good bookstores and some bad ones as well. Ginge Tomasi said, oh yeah, I don't, do you, there it is. Do you remember saying this last week? I, I listened to a bit last week. Do you know what I'm going to show you? So, no, right, no, no. you said, you meant to say he scored an incredible scissor kick last week. Do you want to have a I guess say? at what you might have said instead? <laughs> I, so I remember saying that, and it, I'm pretty sure I said scissor, scissor kick, did I not? No, you didn't. It was, it was, it does relate to football. Place kick? He scored an incredible... <laughs> I hate to do this to you so early in the podcast. And I've had a few it's bad fine. moments this week where I've said the wrong thing. Anyway, he scored an incredible season ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what I said? Yeah, because oh, yeah, when I watched it, I was like, I'm sure he said season ticket, but I'll leave it. 
And then <laughs> someone, yeah, then someone commented on um, You know, you get to a certain stage and I'm kind of... Could be that it's, it happens on Thursday afternoon and Friday where you've, you've, said, you've said so many words. Yeah, they all just swap. They all swap. Oh, and then, yeah, you've just got, you've got brain fog. Um, I apologise for that, but uh, everyone knew what I meant. Everyone knew so exactly what you meant. Do me a favour, right? Uh, it's not... Fuck off. <laughs> there you go. Let it go. Yeah, do, do, let hey, it go. Guys, can you all just do me a quick favour and fuck off? Um, <laughs> right. Uh, Mikel Arteta, masterminding win over Pep Guardiola. Now, I don't. we're going to go we're to the tactics board, man. To the tactics board. All right. So there's a couple of things about this tactics board that are winding me up already. Go on. All right, and it's, you, this is James Alcott. What you're seeing right now, this mess is the way James Alcott operates. And this is the way he works. Right. It's like the desktop, desktop on his computer is mayhem. <laughs> like, there's too many players on there. My OCD is all over the right. shop. Okay, like, me, get all the help. players on. Let me help. Let me help. That's, that's a, they're that's subs, a, are they? They're subs. Okay. They're subs. We'll put them over the side off the pitch. Well, no, because then people won't be able to see them. They're the big talking points within what, it. But do we need all these others on the right-hand side? You, no one can see the others on the right-hand side. If you look at the stream, I've cleaned oh, it's just me. It's just me. Worry. All right, right. So you have no idea what they're talking it's just about. You have to deal with oh, okay. that. Yeah. So don't worry about it. Um, right, right. Joe, I saw a great sentence in football. Don't see it. Don't see this enough. It was lo- it was lovely to read. First sentence of this: Manchester City face a nervous wait. <laughs> Manchester City face Man a City. nervous wait over the condition of Kevin De Bruyne ahead of their Premier League clash with Arsenal. You face a nervous oh, wait, don't you? I just everyone, yeah. everyone just there, just fuck for now. Is he gonna play or not? Just facing it. Just and then what can we do here? Can we stop thinking about this and move on with training? No, we have to face this nervous weight. Yeah, it's a weird one. It's love like football. I mean, it, I, legitimately, is everyone nervous? They're not nervous. They don't yeah. give a shit. Injuries happen all the time. But Pep if right De Bruyne can't fans, play, mate. we're gonna have to bring in this other world class player to fill in for him, like they did last yeah. year for six months. It didn't seem to have any effect whatsoever. It no, doesn't... it really doesn't matter, does it? They've got 12 players on the pitch as well, Jim. Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, sorry, there's another one. Decisions to be made. I, I'm going to put stones on the bench. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Do that. Okay. Right. Decision to be made because this could be an absolutely stinking game of football. That's, it will that's be. what I fear. That's what I fear. Um, and there's, yeah, there's big decisions to be made. Now, the question I've got for you first one, most obvious one. And people have already probably written comments and they're screaming, oh, but you ain't going to play, you ain't going to play. Jorginho might not play. Declan Rice will inevitably come into the team. Now, yeah. Flav, you watched the game. Would yeah. you take Jorginho out? Yes. Or would you take Trossard out? Or would you take Party out? Who would you take out? Jorginho. Jorginho's out. I think I would agree with that. He's the weakest... Parties hasn't played, parties played practically every minute, as I understand it. He certainly started every game, so they clearly rate him, and it gives license for everybody to to play a different role. If you if you're taking Partey out and leaving Jorginho in, Jorginho in there, you would imagine that Arsenal will be a little bit perhaps open, or certainly Rice would have to do a lot of defensive work that Party does. Yeah. So that make, in terms of balance, that makes that makes complete sense. Really, um, you'd imagine they're going to set up. Similarly to how they did it against Spurs. Well, so yeah, that you was know, that fr- was my second question, right? So uh, if yeah. now you've got Declan Rice, like uh, the thing that is absolutely true is that you had more of the ball. You were the more dominant team in terms of having the ball. They had your arms length because they were defensively really, really good, and you made yeah. quite disappointing decisions in the final third, or or ultimately weren't able to break them down. But it was a touch. Smash and grabby. Arsenal fans screaming right now, aren't they? Arsenal fans was, screaming. Take yeah, I mean, obviously... Take a breath, you won the game. Okay. My, well, my, my take home was that... And I think, actually, I was listening to... Who is it? Someone, someone was talking to an Arsenal fan. He's come through to me secondhand. And he said, legitimately, if you take out your biases, that was a very even game for different reasons. Mm. You know, Arsenal nullified a, a you know, a possession-based Spurs team. They did their what exactly what they had to do to win, and was separated by a um, a headed corner. Now, don't get me wrong; their set pieces are incredible. Like how, how I don't understand why it's taken this long to see this stuff. Like what? 
Like everyone else is just like ignore set pieces. They're a waste of the corners. They're a waste of time. Whereas they, they've got this ge- geezer in. He must be worth his literally worth his weight in gold around Arteta because he's just guaranteeing them fifteen goals that they perhaps wouldn't have got from set pieces each year. But it seems so simple. And no, 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 don't get me wrong. There's probably insane amount of hours gone into this, and everyone knows their role and have to do it exactly right. But it's like, oh, this is going to be a problem because look what they do. They're doing, and it's a lot harder to mark a moving unit. Yeah. I'll give you that. And there must be something in the fact that they're scoring so many set pieces, but I cannot, I w- cannot, will not get past Romero's defending for that goal. Absolute shambolic. Okay. Mm, yeah, well. um, so I, yeah. I think that, so this is what I'm intrigued by. is like, you've now got Partey in the team. Uh, sorry, you've now got Declan Rice in the team. So you've got a lot more legs. So then in terms of like style of play against Man City, do you look to do the same thing? Because basically from what I, how I read the game, watched the game, they got you absolutely had him in the middle. You absolutely had him in the middle. And so what they did is they dropped Partey here so that you could oh god. So that you could get round. And you basically just they just never went through the middle. That's what happened. Just, yeah. And then when when the ball was passed into Martinelli and Saka, instead of them trying to hit on the break or trying to get behind a the defence, they often decided to be economical and recycle it and yeah. turn it back inside in midfield, which meant it breaks up momentum and breaks up play. And it was it, it means you can control the ball for a bit bit more. But um, And the goal comes I, from a ball over the top, which then goes to Saka and you get yourself a corner and, and they, they knew they had a chance if they if they win from that. I, I think, I think sorry, God. Yeah. I just think it's probably the best defensive display I've seen at Spurs for a very long, long time. But do you know what I don't has anyone said this to you? I thought it. I think me and Kai said it to each other. When we were watching it. You thought I've had all kinds of things said to me this week. Yeah, no worry. Tough week. The, if Man City get into those same areas at some point, they're gonna yeah, surely. Yeah, it's a different thing. It's you, a different right? thing. Yeah, I don't think they can give up as much possession as they gave up to Spurs when if De Bruyne does play, and you've got Haaland as opposed to you know Solanke. I think will have a good career at Spurs, but the, Haaland is the best number nine in what in the world. Yeah. And um, he doesn't need, he needs one opportunity. And we did have opportunities, right? If you remember in the first half, there were times where we managed to, to get through them. If Man City do that, you feel like they will score. Mm. So, yeah, interesting. So I yeah. think I think Declan Rice and Partey, I think they'll start how they wanted to start in the last one. I think they'll absolutely take a draw. Um, uh, yeah. And what of I think is really With interesting injury here, right away. What I think is interesting is basically, say De Bruyne is not fit. We've then got there's a couple of decisions to make when it comes to Man City. One is centre back. He'll obviously play Ruben Diaz. Where well, you would have thought mm. so. I think he's like it with the English lads. Like is Stones on his way back? That's why I'm fascinated by. And if say Stones plays, is there any way that he like steps in? And because the thing I've, I've not struggling with, but I feel like that surely they would do. Pep's mind would go that way. Is that like, it is still a weakened Arsenal midfield. So if you can utterly dominate that, like do it. But if you start bringing, so the other thing for me is like, do you play Walker or do you play Lewis at right back? Because he seems to like Lewis at the moment, doesn't he? Yeah. But it's a weird one where Walker against Martinelli, like from the defensive point of view, you'd feel a bit stronger there. Lewis, if you're going to play him, he'll end up doing kind of what he does here. If he if he does what he's been doing in all the other games, which he did in the Champions League game, which he did in the Chelsea game, you now let's say he plays let's say he plays a Kanji for whatever reason instead, and he sorry he doesn't play Walker. He'll probably play Guardiola, and it might be like this actually. You kind of have like three here. And he'll work it that way. There's still, this is where it could be like, that's where I think Arsenal play the same way, is you've still got an opportunity around the sides with these two if he doesn't play Walker. So I'm just intrigued to way, see like how much Guardiola kind of goes for it against Arsenal. I think, it, yeah. I think he'll do the same thing as he always does. I don't think, I think similarly to, I think he operates in that largely, maybe this is too reductive, but he just has his way of playing and expects teams to adapt to his, to what he's trying to do rather than him being adaptive. Um, 
that when you're watching, right, this is going to sound mad and someone might think I'm crazy, but Spurs and City, the, the way we build up isn't dissimilar to each other. Yeah, I agree. And when we're playing around the box, the amount of bodies forward is, is almost the same as well. What he does with the fullbacks is completely different, but, but it's not when I'm watching it, I'm like, this looks like Spurs, uh, except it's you know, twice as efficient and they're twice, twice as deadly as Spurs will ever be. But the ideas are the same. And so if how Arsenal were able to get at, Tot- at, at Tottenham, they'll be able to get at Manchester City. But like you said, I think it'll be, it will be decided on whether or not they can get Haaland into positions where he can cause problems. Yeah. Because the, um, there was moments in the first half, and I think, the, I think the, the, the commentary went overboard a little bit, but Solanke was giving Saliba problems. Yeah. Uh, being very physical. And Haaland is a, is, a, is a different beast. And their movement and what... They've got a gravitas about them and they've got Grealish on the left as opposed to, you know, him and Son. And... Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, it's, but it's also like, it's the quality of um, it's the quality of the ball that will come in from these guys. That's probably the difference of like Silver yeah. and Grealish. Cause, Massively. Because White sort of just went of with whoever was on the left-hand side and thought, we'll probably be okay. And if a cross comes in, we'll be able to deal with that. That's the other thing I'm intrigued about. Like the wide players. Savio, I think, I think will definitely play. Um, so then there is this channel here for Lewis if you kind of use him. But if you lose the ball, there is that space in behind for Martinelli. So I feel like he's got two choices. He either like he either plays Stones and Walker, and Stones steps in, and that means you've got Walker there to deal with Martinelli, or you do it the other way and you have Lewis and you fucking go for it. Kanji deals with him, and you don't play Stones. That's uh, it's one of those two things. And then on the left-hand well, side, I'm uh, confused as well. Because I think he's going to want to get Foden you, involved as well. Would you not want... Would you not want Stones to deal with the set-piece issues that they're going to create? Certainly, so, uh, Rico Lewis in, as a defensive unit good point. is going to be an issue. But then do you, do you disrupt your entire tactic just to deal with how good Arsenal are at set-pieces? Hang on, have I done the thing that I always do? Where it's like one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Have I got ten again? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have Foden. That was the other thing I was going to say. You've got Foden. You get Foden involved, which might mean that you don't need Rico Lewis. But I wonder if he wants like to find an overload in the midfield. That's the other thing I wonder as well. Because like the game the yesterday, did... mate, was crazy. They played at one point. They played Diaz, Guardiol, Rodri, and Akanji. So they played one three, and essentially they played one three six. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it, but I mean, I it, so that Spurs we play in possession around the box. We have a two two six, which is yeah, it, it's mental. It's a lot to get used to. But what what I don't want to make this about Spurs. It's not about us at all, obviously. But uh, well, what, it's, oh, but it, do you know what it's about? It it's about what Man City should learn from Spurs. I mean, I don't think they need to. I don't. I think they understand, and and I think it, they, if they do what they do, it will force Arsenal. And this is this is the thing: is if they if, if Man City just do what they do, they get Haaland into an opportunity, even twice, then he'll bury bury one of them. If they go one nil up, I'm pretty sure this would have happened at Spurs as well. As if if we would have managed to score against Arsenal, which we probably could have played them for another ten hours and never scored, but. You you take the lead against them, it forces them to to change somewhat, I think. And um, I just you just look at that team. You know, Silver, Grealish, and Guardiola on that left hand side is so technically brilliant. Like Guardiola coming forward is a is a joy. So know- they're gonna have their work cut out for them. So Saliba and White and Partey. I think White Ben White's become my most uh, disliked. Oh really? Player. I've actually. I, it's funny you say that. I was gonna. I thought I saw something on him earlier in the week. I think he's one of my favourites. Kintasa, Jim. Yeah, no, you should hate him. You absolutely should hate yeah. him. Do you, know what, do you know what I think might win it for? Do you know who I feel like the the, the shining knight is? It's this man here. I think it's, it's got Gundawan, like fourth man runner, fucking written all over it. Absolutely written all over it. 1-0. One 1-0 nil, um, one nil City, Gundawan. But do you know what? If Arsenal could fucking get through it again, good grief. Something's what, this, what does it do? Nothing. It means nothing at this stage, does it? Even if City win, it means nothing. 
I think it's, for me, I would say it's about distance from City to Arsenal. Arsenal are like, they're sort of rope-a-doping a bit. I, I imagine they're going to have to rope-a-dope a little bit until, they, until they're playing a sort of a lesser opponent where they can dominate the game. So in this game against, you know, the Spurs game, they rope a you, didn't they, really? And the same with... Yeah. Same with this one. Like, yeah, they were in I control. I think they'll be better sure. in... They'll, they've got, they'll have more legs to get about the pitch in Rice and Partey. But I think Man City will absolutely be pressing so hard in terms of not allowing you to play through the middle. And you'll have so many players in the middle as well, uh, Man City. So... But there's always that ball. There's always that ball over the top. Um, so you've got. I think Saka's massive. I think Saka's crucial. Yeah, massive. Of course, he's going to be. Yeah, shock, yeah. shock, shock, horror. Well, um, anyway. what do you think? What do you think? Although last week you got it wrong. You said we were going to do. I Arsenal, did. But... I did. I did. Well, you did. You kind of did do them. You couldn't bloody score, yeah, could you? Did, yeah, yeah. We bloody did them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take that with you. Um, yeah. I think that. Uh, yeah, I think like a Haaland sort of bullied goal or yeah I'm going to go with Gundogan 1-0 one I, I think it will honk I think the game will honk yeah so you need the chest can I just like ask Gundogan. you a question Jim of course you can is our Arsenal they just don't with money right Arsenal don't with is that money? what you're doing now oh dear tough way now what I've, what I've started to do is just in case these um just in case these charges do stick for Man City, it's like it doesn't really count if you win it this season, does it? That's a good point. Asterix. There'll be an asterisk next to next to Arsenal's title if they do win it this year because of City. So it doesn't really count if they win it. <laughs> what? Because they had because they had things on their mind. Is that what you mean? No, no, no. If they get dot points, it'd be like we only won it because they get dot points. Well, I can't say anything on that these days because. Uh... Yeah. There's fair play. Employee, aren't fair I? Fair play. I'm an employee. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Come on! Uh, what really happened at the Premier League? <laughs> That's the question. When's your first video coming out, Jim? It's fucking come out, you dickhead. <laughs> oh, <is> it? <laughs> Wait, what on the pro? Because uh, you said you wasn't sure when it was getting out and all that stuff. Yeah, well, it took, took, a, it took a longer than we would like, yeah. Um, but uh, no, it's out, yeah, it's out there. It's, uh, it's doing very well. It's on 130-something. Oh, do you know, we got some news as well, didn't we? The uh, find the fake fan. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that hit a million views. I hit a million views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow sports news says Stoker Fox was right. Yeah, shame. Um, I was hoping to bask in my own glory there for a second, but now we've moved on to um, Lab Bible. Yep, they, they hit a million. Great. Good for them. Yeah, good for them. Uh, just looking at it, Jim, you've got 136,000 views just yeah. smashing everything else on there. Really? 100 grand, 20 hours. Is that good? That is good. Do you know what, though? Look, you know, we worked, we, it's been so, as you know, you know, you know, you knew early days this was a possibility. So we've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And then the video went out and you went, in my head, I went, oh, yeah, the video needs to do well. <laughs> like, all we've been doing is like, can we get this out? Can we like, yeah. can this be real? And then the video goes out. And you go, oh no, don't get like. Do I was scared to look at it, but yeah, the, of course. fortunately the lads were going, oh no, it's it's, it's doing all right. It started well, did it quite quickly, so we're all right. But I had this pang of like, it gets like twelve k. <laughs> which like, you, do you on the do you design the thumbnails? We're having inputs. Yes, we thought that we felt like that was important. Yeah, of course it's important. Um, and yeah, so yeah, if if everyone can um, watch the videos, um, that would be wonderful. Um, because it's ex exciting times. Um, oh yeah, we're gonna be. It won't just be tactical videos. Of all sorts of stuff. stuff well, it's one, one one Arsenal. It's not gonna be Arsenal every week. You know, two big Arsenal games, Fab. Don't worry. We'll be we'll be touching on all the teams. Uh, right. Uh, subplot. Modern day Barclays man Shane Lynch. He's got a two week new bit for us here. <coughs> so current day. Do you know what? I'm gonna, uh, cool. Just quickly, I'm gonna make the Colton Palmer a uh, Barclays and special. Oh, exciting. Fabianski, sorry, current day Barclays man 11. So people that are, are, are have the Barclays man aura, essence, whatever it is you want to say. Um, okay. And in time will An be. Essence of Barclays man for a modern era, right? Is that what yeah. we're doing? Oh, someone okay. who's not on here. 
um, is uh, Abire Eze. I, I went, to, I saw good old Abire on uh, on Tuesday. Crystal Palace, uh, we lost to Crystal Palace, and he scored a deflected goal. Um, and I saw. Did, did he celebrate? Uh, did he do this? He did, did he do this. He did that class act, but um, he actually missed an absolute sit in the first half, and I think it was because he's a ranger. Um, and he yeah, played pretty he bad. Purpose. Well, he played badly for his levels, but there were a few moments where like bloody hell. But I saw that the most I was nearly sick on the terrace, and I haven't done that for weeks. He was nearly sick. So, I'm all for respecting a former player. Okay. I don't need to boo them. That's right. And if anything, when they say his name in the lineup, we'll give you a little ripple. Okay. You can have a little a bit of applause there. But what I saw on Tuesday night, I fucking lost my mind. Because did you vocalise how frustrated you was? Yes, I did. But I don't think they heard me, fortunately. I've got to be careful oh. these days, Flat. Yeah, because you are, you know, you work for the Premier League, so yeah. As you know, and I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to bring heat to it. But anyone who's listened to this podcast long enough, is, they know what my fear is. And we're there now, guys. This is it. We're at Ground Zero, not whatever it is. The, we're there, okay. So the C A N C L L I N G um, is, yeah. you know, it's on its way, isn't it? Let's be honest. So no. No, I don't, I don't want to do it myself. Do you know what I mean? Um, so as a score, we get to one all. 1-0 down. They gave him too much respect, Flab. We gave him too much respect. And then second half, Marty does what he does. Just sort of figures it out, doesn't he? We change it up and we start playing better stuff. 1-1. One, one. Come on. Could beat this lot. And then amazing play from Eze in terms of like, there was, there was a right back trying to close him down. And Eze just went, see ya. So he beat him and he ran and he had a deflect. So this is a 30-yard, okay hit, massively deflected in a uh, goal. Okay. 65 mm. minutes, let's say, whatever it was. Mm. And, uh, and you go, oh, because we got back in the game against Prem side and they played the best team. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I look to my bottom left, two fans start clapping the goal. No, 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 no. no. I don't even want a respectful non-applause, not a non-celebration no. from Eze. No. I want Eze screaming and diving into the Palace fans. That's what I want. Look, if he but does that, that's, that's up to him. But no. That's, Just to, um, I was like, what is what are we doing here? Football's gone. Football's gone, Jim. Can't, look, do you what, know what? what? If they say he scored a screamer, it's gone in the top corner. It's like this, an incredible season ticket goal. You know? He's gone, whew, season ticket it. Yeah, because then, sometimes you even right. involuntary clap. I've seen people at Spurs when someone scored an absolute yeah, weldy and you're like, fuck it. Yeah, and you're 4-1 up anyway. Like, something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, you're not looting. No. So we've gone from yeah. one all, we're just back in the game, and it's a deflected, crappy goal, and they've gone... <laughs> like, it's like that. It's energetic. I was like, what are we doing here? Get are out. you sure they weren't Palace? No, I know for a sure fact they, they were Rangers. They're heavily Rangers. Fuck and yeah, it's just like ranges. you know that like you know, oh you know I'm going to be better than I'm going to be better than the situation here. No, and I'm going to no, be fuck like that. fuck off. Be bitter. It'd be bitter and petty always. Not even bitter. When it petty. comes to football, do you know what the problem is? Do you know what I'm? Noticing? Do you know what I'm noticing? Right, and it's being around people like Luke and Will Brazier as well. He's guilty of this. And when it's just these fans from Championship clubs. Right, because let me stop you there, Flav. Luke Stokes and Will Brazier are not fans of championship clubs. Carry True, on. League One club. You're right, my bad. But they, they were guilty of this when they were in the championship. Which was last year and they got relegated. Right. So, they live on. vicariously through the players that don't want to play for their football clubs anymore. And to me, that is mental. Right? I know Bellingham saved the football club and he retired his shirt and we've had this conversation and Luke's gone to lengths to explain why he's a legend in Birmingham. Still be there if he was if he actually give a shit though, wouldn't he? But 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 this is worse because Eze played for you for what two years? No, you came through the academy. There's a bit more than that. But st- it's yeah, not, I don't want to. I don't not, want you to lose your flow here because I'm, I'm with you. Go on. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, Eighteen months. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, mate. And, and, and do you know what I mean, he's gone now. He's gone. He said, actually, I'm better than this shit, and I need out. That's what happened. 
I think, but it's not even that. It's like, it's okay to, I, I love Eze, right? You know, I've got an English shirt with Eze on it, right? And he is still Rangers. That's why he missed well, no, that chance in the first 10 minutes. But when he does score the goal, this is a competition. He's the bad yeah. guy. You want to be in this. You want to be in this. What That's on bad earth for us, are we happened? doing? Going, well, you know, at least it's our boy Eze. Piss off. It, honestly, it's like, it's so bad. It's so bad. I can't, I don't know where to start. I was really upset. I was actually I, I, more I annoyed correct. with that than losing the game. Like, lose to Palace, fine. Don't do that. Do not do that. I've just, well, I've just found something here, Jim. It wasn't even from your academy. You bought him from Millwall. He didn't buy him. He was released from Millwall. And then Whatever, and then man. Holloway saw Whatever. the quality that he had. Boy. Got him in. Um, yeah, yeah, no, no. See, it's completely... Uh, it's it's beater energy. Oh, just, and, just grim. Pathetic, like... I, oh, there is something in that, wanted... isn't there? There's a, like, oh, um, well, good game then. Good game. Steady on. Yeah, no, no. That's not what football's about. Um, he, SA should have scored and just gone like that. All around, just run around Loftus Road doing, doing that. Do you know what is a bit... Uh, actually, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Because you don't. You can't say it, mate. You can't say it. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes, you can't sometimes when you know it's going to make your club look bad, you don't say it. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to not say it. Okay? Right. Current day Barclaysman, 11. Fabianski. Always solid at West Ham and had a couple of seasons pushing the upper tier of league goalkeepers. Good. By the way, quick plug for um, the Ripple Effect second part. First part with Jimmy Bullard is out. People seem to really enjoy it. The second part is utterly hilarious. Some of the stories are mental. So yeah, I can't wait to listen to it. It's class. I knew that was out, Jim. I knew that was out. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Seamus Coleman, I think he's saying. Right back. Best Premier League signing of all time. 50k, wasn't he? Fair enough. Uh, Ethan Pinnock. Have you seen the stats on him? He has got incredible stats on him. Never loses a duel, says Ethan. She watched him lose one against Manchester City. Yeah, that is true. That is true. It's once it becomes a thing, then you spot it, don't you? All right. Um, Craig Dawson. Blocks. Hairline. Blocks. <laughs> Very good. Um, <laughs> who's this left back? Robinson. Which Robinson? Oh, Anthony Robinson. Genuine top six material. Mm. True. I'm not sure he's. A, I'm not good. sure he's a Barkley man. There's, there's a lack of character there. Anyway, midfield three got Winks, peak bottom ten metronome, James Ward Prowse, set piece master, Emil Smith Rowe. Yeah. Uh, he's, this Shane Lynch is definitely an Arsenal fan. Could become the greatest Barkley man of all time. Smith Rowe, he's saying he hasn't played anything, so he can't be in the list. He how shouldn't can, be on how's the list. Eze not in this? How's Eze not yeah. in this? Yeah, I'd much rather have Eze into Smith Rowe for sure. Absurd. And then up top, we've got Adama Traor in the left. The arms, the oil, the speed. Need I say more? Fair point. Yeah. Dwight McNeil will never move beyond the level of Everton, but produces quality in the left in the left foot. And uh, Danny Welbeck, Barclaysman, don't need England call ups. Danny Welbeck is both a modern Barclaysman and a Barclaysman because he was playing back in the day. Um, Welbeck, just quickly, because we were having this discussion in uh, WhatsApp the other day with my boys. And we were saying, is Welbeck underrated? That guy and if Welbs. He stayed, that, that guy Welbs. And if he had stayed with, um, if he had stayed fit throughout his career, would he have scored 150 goals in the Premier League? Uh, yes, he's underrated. Uh, yeah, he probably would have. But he's so much more than just a goal scorer, though, isn't he? I think he's very complete. And despite, yeah. despite the injuries, he's still, you know, he's still got, you don't think of him as slow, do you? No, you, I just I hate playing against him. I think he's always effective and always difficult. And um, you know, he's got a lovely striker of a ball. Uh, yeah, we love Welbs. We love Welbs. I don't. No, of course. Not. I don't. I do. Uh, <coughs> so, <coughs> what should, should I do? My Colton Palmer then, because it sort of fits directly with this. Go on then. So, what's better than Cole Palmer, Barclaysman edition? Okay. Um, just a quick apology to Toby Puig server. You were in, and then this happened. Go. Okay. Well, it didn't. I, I, I appreciate it's not good the enough, effort, it's not good and he did ask for. It's not good enough, he did enough. ask for the parameters of what it actually is this game, but I'm just not going to say <laughs> ever. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I'm reading it now for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure. 
Right, yeah, good luck. Okay. So, Barkley's an edition of uh, Colton Palmer. Here, here we go. What's better than Colton Palmer, Jim? Is Barkley's man Lucas Neal hard tackling old fashioned Australian right back once with Blackburn Rovers? Sure. Better than Colton Palmer. Okay, just say so you don't have to say Barkley's man and then their name from here in. Okay. Uh, I would say. <laughs> Uh, I'd stay with Carlton, you know. I'd stick with Carlton. Really? Why? Lucas Neal is just a bad. Uh, we I know we got a lot of Aussies who probably love him, but he's just he's a bit nasty, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's, so yeah. was Colin Palmer. So was Colin Palmer, though. To be fair. At times. Got... At times. Yeah. True. Um, but I think I'll right. stick with Carlton. Let's uh, let's ramp it up a little bit. Hugo Rodiega. Rodiega. Um. Rodiego was good. I, did, I, don't, I don't really know what his personality was like, but I did like his celebrations, Rodiego. I'm sticking with Carlton. Really? I'm not sure why. Yeah. But I am sticking with Carlton. Charles and Zogbia. <sighs> See, again, I, I didn't really like Charles and Zogbia. Didn't he, like, just give up on Aston Villa? Catherine would back me up on this. I'm sure he did. Yeah, but he would, wouldn't you? Yeah, he was... He, but he was... Do you know what? He was like... Um, it's all good and well, like, just turning up late and not really bothering a lot if you're amazing like Adele Tarrant but if you're not not sure um, so Carlton Palmer yeah but if you're if you're, if you're if you're if you're if you're like if you if you come in and you've just got fucking Steve Bruce's past the head looking at you you're gonna go I'm not fucking doing this anymore I'm not doing this anymore like imagine you come in and Steve Bruce is there and I've got a lot of time for Steve Bruce I feel a bit sorry for him Mm. All right, I feel a bit sorry for him because especially that interview he gave. Do you remember when he went? He was saying, "I realise I'm the worst part of Newcastle now. All the money comes, and I just I feel like I should leave." That was so heartbreaking because it clearly. Do you know the interview I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brutal. It's so sad, but it doesn't it, it doesn't take away from the fact that if you're in Zogby and you're walking the dressing room, you're going, "I'm not listening to another tactics discussion from Steve Bruce." Just not, just not. Um. People were upset about the Roddy okay. shout, and, and I appreciate that from a different generation. And uh, I said this in the pub with um, Jimmy. Actually, Colt Palmer's not even a Barclaysman. He's, um, he's a Carlingsman. Yeah, he is the Carlingsman. Yeah, yeah. that makes complete sense. But uh, I hear uh, Roddy Egan. I agree I'm probably wrong, but we're here now, so let's just carry on. Also, none of their business, really. It's yeah, your well, it's a conversation I'm having with you. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, don't worry about them. Okay? Thin, I've got thin skin. Cool. I've got... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Right, the next one up. Is Carlton Palmer better than Dean Ashton? Wow, good friend. Your best mate. Good friend. Uh, Your best mate. I took him down, didn't he? On, I took him down the 60, not literally, in a golfing sense. Um, ah, it's got to be Dino. Yeah, Dino. Yeah. Dino wins. Easy, easy. What a player. What, what, a, what, a, what a swing. That's what, for the rest of my uh, life, because I'll probably never chat with Dean again. Um, whenever someone brings him up, I will crowbar in playing golf with him and then of course. the fact that he had a good swing uh, Nwanko Kanu Kanu oof. he's what a Barclaysman he's right up there because again great, what I like yeah. about a Barclaysman is someone who doesn't really try and Kanu's kind of like that just sort of walking about I do love that so yeah mate I've got another Kanu. one for you this is going to be good okay. and this is this is peak um, how many more Baffertimbi Baffer Go miss. Remember, remember What's the it? first thing you think about? A celebration, isn't it? More by the Mad, weren't it? Playing for Swansea. Was it Swan? I think it was, the, I think it was a Tiger. I think it was doing a Tiger, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh, was it Tiger? All right, and uh, that'll do. We'll never have to do that ever again. Okay, there we go. Um, and yeah, I would go, who did we get to? Dean, Ash- Dean Ashton wins. Okay. Right. Uh, where are we? Okay, yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get ugly now. First of all, uh, unnecessary personal rules. Pizza anger. We're kick, I've titled this Shane Lynch back again. Uh, honestly, Flav and a lot of people were annoyed about this. Flav saying, and I agreed. Flav saying people are not ordering a pizza just for themselves, and Jim immediately agreeing sent me to oblivion. What 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 did I say? I don't remember saying that. What we say? said. We basically, I think what we were suggesting was that you generally, are, if you're getting a pizza, you're you're sort of doing it together. If you're like at home on your own, you don't really get a pizza. Is what I thought you were suggesting, and I agreed with. I would never say that. I, I would um, absolutely get a pizza on my own. I think you did say uh, it though. I don't fucking think I did actually. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think you fucking you're just you're you yeah. said it and you're lumping me in with it. Who is this geezer anyway? Who's this? Who said okay. that? Who said that about Shane me? Lynch. He's just on the Barclays and thing. He's uh, he said never have I ever he heard a sentence said so nonchalant and so alien to me in my 25 year existence. The day I order a pizza to share is the day my personal beliefs die. No, fuck that. You bite. I didn't say it. Everyone's saying I said it. You fucking all, all of you are wankers. You don't know what you're talking about. But gaslighting me. <laughs> yeah, do a VAR <laughs> wait, check. Wait, wait, do it. You got. Ga- you're trumping this. You're trumping this. You're just denying it. it aren't you? James, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you I'm it, clip this up, someone who has the time, who probably ain't got a job. <laughs> clip this up. Can't even afford right? I fucking didn't say. Yeah. You, you, I did not say that the fact that. What, so, what was the accusation that I said that, that you, don't really you wouldn't share, have a pizza on no, your own? Yeah, you wouldn't like. I thought that's what you were saying. It was like you normally get it with your right. missus. It's like, whereas like on your own, you no. get something different. No, absolutely not. That's not what I believe. I didn't say that. And, and anyone who says I did is a fucking wanker, I think. Uh, Luke, Luke Stoko um, Pops, who should be busy getting his brand deals, says, I'm finding this. Why don't you, yeah. Luke, why don't you let someone else find it and find me a sponsor? Let, all right? Find this podcast on. that seems to have quite an engaged community a sponsor. <laughs> also... <laughs> Let fucking Jack Hancock, because he's got all the time in the world. I don't even know what he does for it. All he does is review films and tweet about them. That's it. That's his job. Um, Imagine imagine Um, Hancock with his job this week. He's been chatting to his boss trying to connect, going, oh, there's this really good podcast. I'm actually going to be on it this week. Make sure you listen. And he's listened to it again. And you're just going, he doesn't do anything. (laughs) He's never doing anything. What does he do? Well, tell me what Hancock does. Tell me what he does. Tell me. He's commits, he's commits to the podcast every week with Hancock's Hot Take coming soon. All right. Yeah, but we're not paying him for that. Maybe pay him a bit. <laughs> then, then, then it will be worthwhile. Okay. It, then it mean like watching films. Watching films, Jack, that ain't a job, mate. Stoko Pops, Stoko Pops doubling down here. He says, I'm not a miracle worker. Wow. Wow. That yeah. is. Um... Mate, I, I, so right, let me just be categoric about this. <laughs> if I'm ordering a pizza i'm ordering a pizza for me no one's sharing it no one's touching it they can have their own pizza no 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 no, no, no. this is where i think i get mixed up right i i agree with you if i'm getting a pizza it's my pizza that's mental but my, what, my, i you, think what it's saying is that the occasion of getting a pizza would you get that on your own or would you need would it be one that you and your missus get together no, of course it wouldn't. I wouldn't get the pizza together. But they, no, no, they, they no. Would have don't their think it's singular pizza. Stop. Right. It's Friday night. You're I wouldn't right. share so... a pizza, single pizza. <laughs> I know that. No one would. They're normal. Right? Yeah. What I'm saying yeah. is, it's fr- okay, there's two There's two moments here, right? Friday night, you're on your own. Okay? Yeah. You're, you're thinking of getting a takeaway. And it could be, yeah. it could be absolutely anything, right? Or mm. Saturday, you're, you're with the missus. You're going, oh, I don't want to cook. Do you want to cook? Let's get a takeaway. Right? Would you get mm. a pizza on the Friday on your own? Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, I would. But I wouldn't tell anyone about it. That's the thing. That's the key. Like, no, you. <laughs> so, one of the most shameful Shame things. You, Shame pizzas. Shame pizzas. Shame pizzas. It exists. You know what I'm talking about, James? No. Is it, it, You don't understand this. Well, so, I so, so, if you're at home and you've ordered yourself a Domino's and just you eat the Domino's, no one need <laughs> ever need hear about that. Oh. Especially if you had sides as well, Jim. No one need no. Like I would be. I tell you what. If I would say say right, mo- most people would be like, if you were, if they got caught watching porn at home, right, they'd be like, ah, oh, damn, that's really bad. I would feel more humiliated if someone came in and found me with a large Domino's pizza and a side of potato wedges. Right. I'm gonna... I'd be like, oh, what are you doing home? We've caught me. Oh no. Well, I've looked like such a fucking idiot. Look at me. My mate Craig's got the best story about this. I, 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 he might not be able to talk, but let's just let's let's find out. Can you hear that? Can you hear mm, that? No. Probably won't pick up. He never picks up. Great podcasting. Um. Anyway, he basically got he got caught he got caught by his missus, and that was their thing. It was awkward. What, I'll find what, out. What, I'll get what, him to do a voice note or something. What, ma- what eating pizza or masturbating? No, eating pizza. Eating pizza. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The thing is, it's the same. It's the same level of shame. It's the same level of shame. Worse of it. Um, feminine pasta. Catherine's had her say. Um, she says, as one of the resident females of the pod, I can say I've never judged a man for what they eat on a date. 
because it wasn't masculine enough. Uh, <laughs> what do we talk about? On this fucking yeah, maybe you're, you're a part of the problem, Catherine. Well, so this is interesting. I, I'm intrigued to get your take on this, love. Pastor is definitely not feminine. But also, does that mean I would get judged for having a steak on a date because that yes. would be an inherently masculine meal? Absolutely, yes. Coconut yes. coconut juice said, I don't know. I took a chick on a first date and she ordered barbecue ribs. I definitely judged her a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is, is yeah. Ribs, ribs both um, slightly yeah. suggestive, but also horrifying at the same, Hard at the same to eat. time. Hard to eat. Like, like, what, Jim, sexual in any way? I don't know. Jim, if you if you would take an farrow lamb out on... No, said, I'm going to cook for you. Come around to my place. I'm going to cook for you. Yeah? I'm going to watch Netflix and that. Yeah. And then you gave her beans on toast. Do you reckon you could recover that situation? <laughs> Um, well, I, I mean, I stole someone's Nando's from the table next to us. Whole so chicken, I feel like a I whole, do, I feel like I can do it. it yeah, a, a whole a chicken. Quarter. Wasn't a lot, it was a quarter. Um, <laughs> can't let that go. I right. cannot let that go, fam. We have, um, we've had a development here. We have the timestamp of when you supposedly said it. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see this bullshit. Then. Okay. There you go. Good luck, everyone. Um, explanation of what the top five is. So I'm not going to do that. So that's where we're going. Okay. Thoughts um, on that, thoughts. It, 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 he's mental. He's, 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 he's mentally unwell. Yeah. He, just eat, if you have to, eat the... Have you not got... Is this completely on his own, obviously? Completely. Is that, he's, he's not sharing... Most people don't buy pizza just to eat on their own. They're generally sharing it with a family, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 so no, 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 no. My no. mind space was that he's just, come out of, he's just come out of the pizza place and he's just smashing the family's pizza and no. then sort of rearranging no. it so it looks like he hasn't had a couple of slices. Mm. Um, yeah, no, no. No, 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 no. no. So what, what's <laughs> happened here, right? It's obvious what's happened here. What's happening? Is I've... I've what's happened here, right, is I've I'm doing something, right? I'm doing a bit, right? I'm doing something. I'm 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 concentrating on the fact that he is disguising his pizza in his pizza <laughs> box so the family can't have any. That isn't the same you could clearly that's what I was doing. So I don't think um I don't think that's I, that's that's not fair at all, really. <laughs> it was more about having a go at this bloke than it was about discussing whether or not it should be shared with the family. I think you guys know that, and you'll uh, respect what I've said and and just move on, really. Right. Okay. Well, let's move on then. Um... Look, you fucking your <laughs> well, your card is marked, son. Your fucking card is marked. Strike two. I'll tell you what. Um, sludge puppy carbonara is the most masculine pasta there fucking is. I'm fuming. The sauce is made from emulsifying nice. the rendered cheek fat of a slain hog. If it doesn't get mad in that, I don't know what does. <laughs> Fair point. Fair play. Uh, yeah. Unnecessary rules. I think we touched on this somehow. I didn't realise this was a thing. But um, Femery5011 says, I used to hold my breath in tunnels on my way to work every day. I had so many blackouts, I got sacked from my job on the district line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nim said, I completely agree with not having more than one packet of crisps a day. I have the same rule with ice cream. I think that's true. Can't have two ice creams a day. More so than crisps. Uh, I mean, uh, That's more set in stone than crisps. You can't have, you can't I, have, ice, you can't have ice cream for lunch and then for dinner. That's mental. No, you can't. You can't have ice cream. That, ice cream is something you have like once every six months. An ice cream, isn't it? It's not. You know, I was eating two ice creams a day. Are they? No, no, no I agree. I agree. Um, Sean uh, Peake. What, what is? Well, what, cool. if you're are you an ice cream guy, Jim? I you love like it. saying, I love yeah, I'd love it. I love an ice cream. Really? Okay. All right. Let's delve into that a little bit because. Um, what are you when you say ice cream? You're talking like a tub of Hagen dazs or are you thinking more of a like a Mars ice cream? It's um, it's well, if Fam buys the um, Fam does this horrible thing where she buys um, like any like crisps, whatever, like good food that you'd love to eat and binge on, and she'll just like have a yeah. few, have a few and leave it. And so, no. like, she'll buy I she'll it. buy I'm some smash them all, actually. Exactly, she'll buy magnums. I'm going right, so that's every day for next week. We're having a magnum, right? And yeah. um and and it's just it's just in my mind all the time. That's why you I know the magnums are there. I know they're there. You and know, as long as I know there, they're there, are they there now? Are they there now? Yeah, there's there's there. I know for a fact there's a classic one there because the almond ones and the white ones have gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. You can't be expected to go about your day, Mate, when right. there's a magnum in the fridge. Yeah, 
So, you, so, so your plan would be to eat a Magnum every single day of the week until they're gone, <laughs> right? And then you can just get move on. Yeah, because they're finished. So what a fam think is the correct way to behave? She just like forgets about them. And I'll be like, oh. I'll be like, ice cream then, love. <laughs> She's like, nah, I'm all right. Yeah. I'll have a chamomile tea. I'm so, like, so the... fuck off, love. All right, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, the, the thing is, the thing is, is what, what's the, what, what's the point <laughs> of buying them <laughs> unless you can smash them as often as you want? Actually, it's worse having them in there because you can't, it, it's weird, isn't it? Because, for some reason, you can't just have an ice cream whenever you want. It has to be family's yeah, gatekeeping. Because she's ice cream. got them. Because she's got them. So they're hers. Well, if you got them, you, you oh, they're hers. Yeah, that's the problem. And think, free, see, this is my problem. Each, no? I don't want. I don't want to be having ice creams every day because I'm gonna get well, enormous, don't. right? So don't. So, don't, so buy I don't buy them. Yeah, of course. Do you know what we understand. have a rule? We did it yesterday. She on Sunday. She had. Um, I was working, but she had. Uh, the family came around. And she bought this like, it's this amazing like nut brittle thing and i love i love stuff like that and there was a massive right. thing of it and I, i've sort of like opened the cupboard and gone what's that yeah and she's gone oh yeah it's, it's um, not for you she knows she knows it's a bit of me so i've sort of had it and then last night well this is something that we do i'll go i'll go you're gonna have to hide that because i because i'm just like now at least i don't have to think about it. if i don't know where it is i can move on but if it's so just she's like act- about she's act- so she's actually hidden it from you that's are you okay? I'm asking her That's to hide it. I'm asking her to hide it. I'm like, can you please hide it? Because this? you just don't trust yourself. Because I can't. If it's there, I can't not eat it. It's impossible. Uh, anyway, uh, Sean Peake, uh, not only for myself, it's unnecessary, but feel like this is one for all men. I think this is true. So, if you're walking on a flat surface, concrete, tile, and there is a lone loose rock, you must nonchalantly kick said rock as far as you can without breaking your stride. Continuing, I don't do that. Do you not? Continuing to kick the rock every time you catch up with it, as long as it's within one footstep either side of you. So I do something with the rock, but I don't just kick it as far as I can. I will dummy it with my front leg and with a back, back heel, like a Cruyff back heel. Oh, yeah. Scoop it it left. That That's oh, what I'll do. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do exactly this, what Sean's described, <laughs> for as long as possible. <laughs> Even if I've reached my destination, I'll just keep going. Jack Hancock said, I started drinking chamomile tea for anxiety last summer. It tasted so bad that I actively chose mental health illness over it. <laughs> Don't know, that's a laugh. Pretty sure I am. Um, mental health is serious. Uh, X mega unnecessary personal rule. Oven hobs don't go on past 8 p.m. Hungry? Toaster is there. Fridge is full of leftovers, but they will be eating cold. Weird. Don't, don't, I'm not with that. Um, I, won't, I won't be cook, cooking after 8, I don't think. We, we, I true. cook around 6. But what if, yeah, yeah, you're more likely to heat up, aren't you? You're going to be heating up. Someone else should have cooked by that point. Mm. And last one, uh, J Butt FC. Uh, whenever I go to a restaurant for the first time, I'll always order fish and chips if available. This is the benchmark in my judgment of a food establishment. I'd prefer the steak, but how can I know if I can trust the chef? It's led to, tr- to trying some excellent fish and chips and has prevented me from being disappointed by a poorly cooked I, steak. I, I love that. Recommend. I love that. It's completely sensible. So safe, isn't it? Fish and chips in a pub because you know it's enormous, you know, you've got chunky chips there that are gonna, even if there's not lots of them, you're gonna be full. It's a very safe I, option. I can't think of a pub where I've been to a pub that have had good food, really. I thought actually, like, I really like that food we went when we went out the pie and that mash. You did like, yeah, you, you didn't really about that pie, yeah, almost too <laughs> dense for me, maybe, which is which I know is shocking considering some of the things I've said in the last few weeks. Um, speaking what, of which, the pie was too dense. Yeah, the, the I want a more. I want a sort of. I'd I prefer a puff pastry than like a. Than, you know those hard ones that look like a. They feel like a coaster. I want it to. I want. I want. I want the the, the pastry to be a little bit dough, doughy, I like the soft, a soft. Yeah, I'm okay with that. But crisp. Do you want it crispy Crumble, too? Flaky. But I'm not really into the flaky mm-hmm. pastry now. I do. I love it. Do you know I bloody love? Let me, can, oh. I, can I can I shock you? Che- chicken and leek pie. That's on the menu. Whoa. All goes in. Uh, right. Uh, if everyone's everyone thought we hit a, a low at some point during these last six years, think again. Here we go. Close off pooers. <laughs> <laughs> Got a prem gig this week. Announced it. Everyone's really. <laughs> <happy>. <laughs> Everyone was, everyone was really happy for me. It was overwhelming. I was so happy. 
And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing you do with me brings you down to this level. Two days I had. Two days. Mm-hmm. But I put it in the running order, so it's not on you. I mean, just so we, uh, you know, make make this clear, if anyone from the Premier League is watching, all we're talking about is if some people out there, and I'm sure you'll agree this is weird, is they take off all their clothes when they have a pup. Yeah, and that's all we need. To... The important thing is we're, we're not saying it's not weird. We absolutely understand that it's weird, but no one's getting hurt here. Okay. Um, Arjinda8400. As someone who doesn't usually take off all his clothes before doing a poo, I can tell you... Oh, yeah, this is amazing. The language this guy uses. I can tell you that, that taking them off for a really intensive ride can be quite liberating. Ride. This is mad. If I really need to press, press. <laughs> I do take them off sometimes because I'm genuinely sweating. <laughs> uh, on top of that, I, I get to move around more freely. Maybe people who always take off their clothes only have really intense poos. Right. Um, Adam Oliver said, I myself do not partake in the action, but I know of a mate who does. He's a big rugby lad. And uh, he... And his poos, and he has poos that match those credentials. He does it out of necessity, and it's an acceptance that sometimes it's a state of inner struggle. In a sense of anticipation, preparation, like a player taking off their tracksuit before the kickoff of a big game. Uh, and last one, I, I'm not going to say his name because he admits to being a close off pooer. No, tell you, I want to know his name. Matt Bradbury. <laughs> um, he said it's it was the it was great user. <laughs> uh, as a close-off pooer, it's definitely got a bit of an OCD vibe. Where for inexplicable, inexplicable sensory reasons, I have to take my top off. <laughs> I have to take my top off. I always thought it was a bottom half thing. It seems to be a top, it's the top off. What if it's freezing? And also, there's if it's yeah, but then again, if it's bottoms off, just bottoms off, there's nothing more ridiculous than a man who's wearing <laughs> socks and no trousers on. Is there what you think is a class? So, what if someone bursts in, it's better that they've yeah. got the top off too? And you go, <laughs> you sort of go, fair enough. Yeah, whereas you go, why haven't you taken your top off? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Why are you asking questions? You clearly see me having a poo. Why are you asking me questions right Get now? Get out. <laughs> but why have you taken your top off as well? You've taken them off. Why have you not taken it's your top nothing... off? Mate, it's nothing to do with you. It's not just leave me alone. Answer the question. I'm... Answer the question. I'm not, not going to answer not... the question. I'm not going to answer... answer the question. Lads, come see this. He's taking his trousers <laughs> off, but not his He's top not... off. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Please leave me alone. This doesn't impact <laughs> you at all. Yeah. What's all this kerfuffle? It just gets bigger, doesn't it? Like the, <laughs> the owner of the pub. What's all this kerfuffle? Why is it all so loud? <laughs> he's saying he, he's taking his trousers off and his pants off and his socks off and his shoes off. He's not taking his top off. Why haven't you done that? <laughs> I'm not answering that. Can you look? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, anyway, to finish off, he says, then it varies in how overwhelmed I feel as to whether the trousers, pants and socks come off. But that would only happen... In my home toilet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a class act. I'm a class act. Yeah. <laughs> not weird. Uh, there's nothing weird about it. I'm not doing it in public. Mm. Amazing. Well done. Well Can done, we man. extend this on for another week? Um, and uh, <laughs> Go on. and just find out if anyone does poo at football? Because we did we have that last week? Uh, way that... back when we had poo, poo Q shame, didn't we? That was one of my <laughs> things. Yeah. Um, which Would happened. Would be the wrong time the to time. bring back football in, footballers' wanks? No, no, no. No, no, would no, be the wrong no. time. Not now. That would man. be the wrong. Can time. I just get? Yeah. Can I just get my feet under the table, please? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Good grief. Um, Stephen tries. He's back. We said we all wanted a top five. He's got some options. Flav, you can decide which one. He said you could have okay. top, top five footballers' careers after football. Top five <laughs> members of JLS. <laughs> not. Sure. I think it was a three. So not sure that's got legs. Uh, uh, and uh, top five days you want to relive. I think that one. I can. Really, I quite like the first one. Footballers' careers after football. That is funny too. Can I? Um, you decide. Uh, can I? Um, 
I'll just start us off by saying Dave Mackay, one of the greatest midfielders to ever play the game in the top flight and won the Premier League or the old Division One with Derby. Mm. When he retired, he opened up a tie shop in Tottenham. It's called Dave Mackay's Ties. That's lovely. That's true. It doesn't have to be real, Stephen. So you do either because it's all content, isn't it? Uh, but yeah, that's a good shout. Top top five footballers' careers. Doesn't yeah, it doesn't have to be real. What's his name? Um, there's a there's a referee who's got a record shop. Can't remember his name. Yeah. Um, so looking forward to it, Stephen. Keep it going. Uh, right. Top five. Then Hancock. We're going to finish with you, mate, with your hot take. Exciting. Uh, Jay Cartwright. Um, top five ways to greet someone when you've met them before but haven't for- but have forgotten their name. Good. This is the guy, these kind of top fives I want. These are the kind of top fives I want. So in five. um, Boy. There he is. How's it going, boy? Good boy. In fourth spot, buddy. Good to see you, buddy. Three. Chief. (laughs) How how are you, chief? (laughs) Two. You. Hello, you. (laughs) Been a while. Good. And then, of course, in top spot, mate. Picture Mate is yeah, it's you just gets you out, gets you out of jail, doesn't it? Yeah. You out of jail. Mm-hmm. I actually um, did sunshine. I used to say sunshine quite a lot, but it oh, appears yeah, that a lot of people people got find that, it, didn't they? Yeah, they found that a bit. I did it to Steve Van Man, Man once. We did uh, oh, yeah, yeah, agree yeah. to disagree, and I went, "All right, sunshine." He went, "You sunshine in me," and I was like, <laughs> "Term of endearment." Very good. Uh, right, my personal Jaff and top five moments. Um, you can debate this in the comments, but he's gone. Fing- I actually can't remember three of these, two of these. Um, Fingers in mouths, season one, episode twenty. Haggle slag rant. Can't remember it. Season four, episode no. twelve. Um, three. He's bummed the kids. Season one, episode eleven. Season yeah, true. Uh, in fourth spot. Sorry, I've gone the wrong way around. Vanderbeek slash Solskjaer pencil bum. Do you not remember that? <laughs> I, think, I think that was wasn't that when he held it was I don't know what it was but like Van der Beek like put, hold, held a pencil on the so it's got a bum when he was sat down was it that? I have no clue season 3 episode 8 so he didn't play him I don't know yeah. and Sandwich of course uh, season 1 episode 18 um, of course White Teeth as well uh, right Hancock's hot take Hancock uh, make your way in to the Jaffa Live studio. Whilst you're coming in, actually, this is uh, good, because I think this is a good one. You know, we said last week, Flav, about, um, yeah. you know, moments in a film where you go, I'm out. That's it. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a good one from our very own Ollie Sage. And I thought this was good. And I was like, oh, what was it going to be? And then it was, yeah, bang on. I thought it was really good. Um, and uh, by the way, I finished The Bear last night, and it's incredibly indulgent. I've got to be say, I'm not happy. Yeah. And it just felt like now. a buffer Done. series so that it could get to series four, five, and six. And, I, and I'm a little bit... It does happen about. sometimes. Yeah, it does happen sometimes. Yeah. But, but the indulgence was wild in the last episode. Are you going to give it up? No, but it, but but you know, I did think, I think you will lose people. You'll lose people here, but you will get six seasons out of it. So fair enough. Um, mm. Ollie Sage says, the ultimate I'm out moment came when watching Ocean's 12 this past weekend. During a weekend marathon of the Ocean's Trilogy, we eagerly dove into the sequel after enjoying the first film. However, Ocean's 12 didn't captivate me as much as its predecessor. The numerous heists the crew attempted made the plot feel convoluted and disrupted the flow of the movie. But that wasn't the worst part. My I'm out moment came when in the middle of the film, Julia Roberts' character Tess Ocean pretends to be Julia Roberts to gain access to a museum housing the Fabergé coronation egg. Do you remember that? Yeah. Shocking. Yeah. Fuck the, up. Yeah. The idea just of having up. a character played by a famous actor pretend to be that same actor in the movie is just absurd. How could anyone not notice the difference when they're the exact same person? And therefore, why are they making any attempt to hide the actual identity? Good shout out. Yeah. Um, any I'm out moments in film or life? Let us know in the comments down below. Right. Hancock's hot take. Hello, Hancock. Hello. Hi. I feel like I felt like Ben Bowman. I was just kind of lurking in the corner. That's fine. You were you yeah. were, you were asked in. You came in in a much sort of tighter time frame. It's and we're different. It's different from what what you're referring to is an incident that happened 
in the mailbag, which is our Patreon yeah. podcast, oh, yeah, where, uh, you know, I won't go into the details, but Ben behaved like a, you know, some an undesirable <laughs> character in, in, in society. But uh, Jack, you're, you know, obviously this is during the podcast, so it's right for you to do what you did. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, right, uh, uh, we continue. People really enjoying it. Uh, Hancock's Hot Take. Um, how many films are we on? Well, I'm on 277 this year, um, and 894 overall. I um, I do. If it's all right with you guys, I want to read out a comment from from the uh, from last week's episode. Okay, careful. From, uh, yeah. yeah. From infamous, you know, clothes off poor Matt Bradbury. He says, <laughs> "Who's Matt Bradbury?" This kind of, home is my core. <laughs> yeah. Matt, said, Matt, 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 Matt Bradbury's right. listening to this. Sorry, Matt Bradbury's just gone. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's just like he's had a disaster with the first. I think of everyone I knows. I have Every... commented. I can't believe you said my name. Oh, but at least that's it. <laughs> Off you go. Infamous. He Pura. says, "Yeah, yeah, infamous." <laughs> I like Hancock's hot take. The maximum amount that's possible while simultaneously not being bothered to go and listen to Floodlight's camera action. Love the segment. It doesn't quite tip the scales into going off and listening to the pod. Very... Cheers, Matt. Yeah, nice Very one, good. Matt. Cheers that's for being Floodlight's right. camera action, which is available by just searching searching. Floodlights, camera, action. Um, right, what we what we got this week? Where are we going? We've got a double header. Ooh, We've got a double header. Because I think Ooh. why not piss off just one fan base when you can piss off two? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking I've to got there. <laughs> two of the most overrated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two of the most overrated films of all time. Number one, and I think both these are good films, but massively overrated. Number one is the original Blade Runner, and number two is Citizen Kane. Yeah. Citizen Kane is overrated, you say? Oh, it, it's deep. rated by everyone as the best film ever made. And it's like, it's, it is great. Don't get me wrong. It's impressive. But... In, yeah, it's like, it, you know, I'm with you. I is, don't think. Is it one where, um, you know, like, I'm trying to think of an example where someone, it was so, it was such a given that that's not even just the hipsters, but the general, it's like the beat. It's like, I don't really like the Beatles. Is it like that? It's been hyped too much. Yeah. What's your favourite Beatles you're... album? I'd probably say Best of the Beatles. <laughs> Best of the Beatles. Um, Is it I, yeah, I, I, think, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that's a hot take, actually, Luke. I think it's a fairly acceptable well, one. Luke, so, yeah, I know you hate both of us equally, but... <laughs> we are Jack, brother, Jack, yes. Jack, Jack, sorry. Sorry, he's in my head. That's what he's fucking done me with that I've video. I've not watched he, Blade Runner. He rattled, hasn't he? So I don't know if that's... second one's better. The second, second one's, one's better, way better. better. Like, considerably better. No, no, no! Hang on a second. It's not way better. It wouldn't exist yeah. without it. What, mark, no, what marks are we giving? The second Blade Runner is better. I gave the original a three point five out of five, and I gave the remake. It's either a four point five or a five out of five. Can, uh, can I ask you of your eight hundred? Remake films, is sensational. Of your eight hundred films, what? How many? How many? Um, how many fives have you given out? Uh, I've given out forty-eight, and there's been a new five recently. It's been a new five. Well, this week. Interesting. Yeah, this week. Um, it is. Wait, 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 wait. Right. That was aggressive. Sorry, no, just because this is good. So, what? Um, almost one for the comments. Maybe we'll come back to this next week. So, of the five that you've recently given out, can you think of three options? And people could over the weekend go away, maybe watch them, and see if they agree with the five that you've chosen. See what I mean? Okay. Um. Yeah, the most recent ones, Punch Drunk Love, in my opinion, the best film ever made. Uh, Everybody Wants Some, great hang-up movie, really fun. And let's go for another one, After Hours, by Martin Scorsese. Okay, so only one of them's got a five? All three have got a five. Oh, fuck. Um, (laughs) Punch Drunk drunk Love is sensational. It's, It's a sensational film. I've never seen After Hours. What is that? It's, it's incredible. It's it's like um, imagine you know when you're when you're when you're asleep and you're dreaming and you kind of you're stuck in like um almost like a nightmare sequence where you just can't get away from something or like you'll try mm. and go somewhere but you just can't run. Yeah, it's it's not a horror movie, but it's it's a comedy if anything. But it's essentially about this guy who goes to Soho in New York um and gets stuck there for a night and he's just he's trying to get home but he just can't because just shit just keeps happening. Um, yeah, amazing film. And uh, any recommendations for this weekend on something on Netflix or anything like that? I mean, 
uh, Punch Drunk Love is on Netflix. Punch Drunk Love. Punch Drunk Love. So I would recommend that. On it. Have you seen um, it, Jim? Uh, not many so. people have seen it. I feel like I might Everyone have, needs to I, see it. It's yeah, so no, no, it's Al Dwight, so it's so good. Um, it's Adam Sandler. It's, yeah. Ooh, my and Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is my favourite actor of all time. That's a great shout. That is a good shout. That is a great shout. Um, mm. Great work. Um, not not the um, no, no anger really. A total a total agreement. Well, well, can we'll I back stronger? We'll be back stronger. Love, yeah. Can I um? Can I give a hot take? Of course you can. Sure, of course. Well, someone's got to do it because I've let the side down. Well, it's tough. I mean, like, it's they're interesting takes. They're just not enough to wind alchemy, people up. But then yeah. it depends how you feel, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, Martin Scorsese should never be allowed to make another film ever again. Well, because he's old. What? The... Yeah, that. Or what? Just, the... That, the Irishman was just a pile of shit, wasn't it? Uh, it, did anyone yeah. actually finish it? Did anyone finish it? Do you know what I did? Because I'm one of them where I'm like, right, I need to get to the end of this. But it was like, oh, it was so like you're wait, just you... crowbarring. You're just creating a film so you can get these lads together. Yeah, just fuck off, yeah. basically. Okay. And he's peaked. He peaked a long, long time ago. Okay. I would say. What is uh, his best film, Quilly? Scorsese. I love... Oh, I Wolf Fellas, of Wall Street or Goodfellas. What you say? What do you say, Jack? I think, well... I mean, my my top three are probably Goodfellas, King of Comedy, and After Hours. I guess like the agreed one in terms of my personal take and the audience in general, it would probably be Goodfellas. I I came back from the Jaffin live show um, for the England game, so pissed, really drunk. I got a KFC, lay down in my hotel bed, and Goodfellas was on because I left the TV on, and I basically just gorged myself on chicken whilst watching Mate, Goodfellas. Good. Oh, what an experience! Oh, it's yeah, a great experience. Yeah, lovely. But he had a period, like, didn't he? A period of insane success. Um, My long levels. Period. What thirty years or whatever it is. Yeah, like you got like the Aviator's great. Cape Fear. I mean, if you ever watched Cape Fear, fantastic. Wolf Wall Street, fucking seminal. Very rewatchable, both Goodfellas and Wolf Wall Street. Shutter Island, great. Shutter Island also. What the problem is is once don't once you have the twist, you can't really watch it again. I think you can thing. watch it once. I think Here's our day. More on top of that. His hot take is he um, does he lack a bit of range because he just keeps relying on the same actors? I, yeah, I'd never want him to cast any of those fuckers ever again. Apart from Leo, isn't it? Leo's oh awesome. god, doing it again, are you? Fucking doing it again, crowbarring Robert De Niro and fucking <laughs> right. Well, right, I'm going to see my son, so I'm we're going to call it there. Great work, well done, Flav. You made it through today. That's great news. And we all made it through today. So well done, everyone. Um, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, thank you to Jack. Thank you to everyone of our patrons. We love you all. If you want to join them, links in the description. Uh, cheers. Goodbye.